Bell ringers. This video is going to be about my bell ringers and quick things to do as students file into your classroom. Um, so while students file in, uh, I give them something to do to keep them meaningfully occupied in the first few minutes of the class. This allows me a few moments to count heads, to do attendance, to allow a late person to straggle in, uh, and maybe prep for the day's lesson, particularly if there are no preps between classes. Once they get in the habit of a daily task, the rest of the period tends to go really well. I'll include some links below uh, that you can see some free resources that you can use. And then at the end of the video, I'll show you um, some resources you can purchase for your classroom library. So one of them that I like to do every Monday is a read and respond to a famous quote about art. So for example, there's an Aristotle quote, uh, art completes what nature cannot bring to finish. So I have students read it, think about it, interpret it, and then write it down. This takes us about three minutes. And then I have three people kind of raise their hand and tell me what they think it means. And then we move on with the rest of the period. It's a great way to incorporate literacy and kind of get kids focused on uh, art concepts. Uh, sometimes I do a daily uh, drawing challenge. So it might be one of those follow along um, projections that I put up on my whiteboard where how to draw a dog, how to draw an elephant. I don't like to do lessons like that, but for the first three minutes of kids coming into the room, that can be fun. Or a cartoon challenge, I'll have the, you know, the directions up on the, uh, the whiteboard. I can also put out an object in the front of the room and just have students draw it from observation. And they know it's just going to be um, five minutes and then we get started with the rest of our, our day. Um, so that can, that can turn out to just be a thumbnail and it, that's, that's fine. Just get them thinking. Um, I call this one justify a scribble where you just scribble on a page. Um, you can have students reach across, scribble on the uh, partner's um, copy paper, make a scribble, and then they have to turn it into something. Um, I've even done this as sub plans where you make a scribble, you photocopy it for your kids, and then that gets handed out and they have to turn it into something. So if you're doing it once in a while as a quick warm up, and then you know as a sub plan they have to do it for real, um, that can be a real great uh, fun you know, exercise for a day, particularly if you need it. Uh, I do a daily art uh, definition, so that can be helpful. Maybe we'll do, um, you know, our primary colors, or it might be uh, triadic colors, or, um, you know, one of our art principles. Uh, any sort of art concept, chiroscuro, you know, we'll throw out a, a really challenging word, and then they can do a definition for the day, and they could, if there's enough time, um, draw a little. Uh, you know, a little thumbnail to kind of explain what that actually means. Uh, compare and contrast two famous artworks. So I can project those on the board. I have a little handout that they kind of uh, fill in while I'm doing attendance and getting ready. So um, I try and pick two works that are kind of similar by different artists so they can talk about the similarities and they can talk about the differences. You could also describe a masterpiece, project one piece up there, and then get students in the habit of being able to describe things in detail. Give them five minutes, write as much as they can, and then um, you can collect those. Students can uh, hand in their best one for the week, and then you can get a little uh, classwork grade out of it if you need one. Um, another one for the little ones is a daily emoji. So they can just draw on a piece of uh, uh, copy paper and then hold it up and we can have a little discussion about how your day is going. But it's nice to be able to do a drawing that has an emotional uh, meaning to it and get them uh, working symbolically right away. Another one is a daily sketchbook from observation. So they can just pull something out of their backpack, draw that today, um, or maybe put something on the uh, tables if you have them grouped and that's going to be their uh, daily sketchbook observation. Uh, a mashup is a nice, a nice fun way to um, get kids drawing again and thinking differently. So you can call out two things and then they have to go ahead and draw that for five minutes. So I might call out a, a scissor and a bird and everyone's going to have a different um, result because you have to morph those two things together. So maybe it's a, you know, a scissor beak you know, on a, on a bird or maybe it's scissor legs, however they interpret it. And we can kind of have a little laugh at the end of that and uh, have some fun drawing and thinking in new ways. Um, we also do, uh, can do a um, daily masterwork critique. So writing about a work and why you like it or why you do not, and then to cite specific reasons why. Um, so that can get them thinking critically. Um, you could also do a one paragraph story based on a masterwork. So you can project something and then they have to say that that's the um, 
that's the picture for the story that they're going to write. Just a quick little, you can even do it on an index card. The kids have to make up a story and that gets them thinking about literacy. It gets them thinking about the artwork and making uh, interpretations of the artwork. So that can be a lot of fun. Um, on my blog at artedguru.com, I have a whole tab just for um, art cartoons. So you can project a cartoon and then students can write, why is it funny? Um, I know that's the best way to kill a joke, um, but there are a lot of really interesting art concepts that I've posted on my blog. And you can find other cartoons that are based on art as well. Um, and just have them thinking, they get a good laugh out of it, and then kind of describe why is this particular joke funny? You know, what is it that we're playing with? Is it the language? Is it the visual? What's, what's going on? So that can be kind of interesting. And again, making a literacy uh, connection. Sometimes I'll project very, very short YouTube videos, like two to four minutes, and I'll have the students write a couple of facts about what they see. Um, I have a form that you can download on my blog about that. Again, I'm going to link that uh, in the description below, um, and then they can get thinking about it. I have uh, another tab on my blog with hundreds of videos, and I try to put in the time so you know how short they are. So um, they're great for uh, bell ringers and do nows could do a weekly uh, career fact about art, you know, putting that on the board. Again, you might find a, a quick two minute YouTube video that would go along with that. Um, a daily personal goal. They can write that down on a sticky note. Um, what is their goal for the day? What do they want to have completed on their project by the end of the period? Um, you can even share and get peer feedback on that. You know, is that a reliable or reasonable goal or are you expected to do too much? Um, you can also do a daily or weekly media technique in a sketchbook. So one time you can show stippling and they do a quick one in their uh, sketchbook or uh, crosshatching or, you know, any number of techniques that they can kind of play around with. And maybe you would do that on a weekly basis. You know, Mondays can be this, Tuesdays can be that. So you get a nice rotation and nobody gets bored. Uh, peer critique of work in progress. I found this to be extremely helpful with my own students in uh, peers helping peers. So um, we just put all the artwork into a pile at the end of the day and the next day you just take anyone out of that pile and you put a sticky note on it with your thoughts about it. Something positive and something helpful. Uh, and then it goes back to the student that it belongs to. So um, that's a great way to kind of get students in the um, in the thought process of critiquing and helping out their peers and um, we found that projects uh, actually get better uh, through this process. So some resources that you can have for your classroom library. Um, I have this one called the Inspirational Sketchbook and each page has a different famous uh, quote about art on the page and the idea is that you can you can just read these out if you're going to do the five minute bell ringer but let's say you're going to be out for a day you can photograph this page the book comes with copyrights and then students can kind of decorate the page to express what's going on in the quote if you want to turn it into a full lesson then on the back of each page um, they have a place where they can research a little bit about, you know, what does the quote mean to them and then research about the author of the quote. You know, they can look up in, you know, whatever resource you feel is, is appropriate, you know, even Wikipedia uh, and find five more facts uh, about the author. So there is information about the author in a tiny paragraph, but then students can be, you know, looking for additional ones. So that makes, uh, you know, great lesson plans. And I have other sketchbooks like this at firehousepublications.com. Um, there are three books um, that I would recommend uh, from my If Picasso series. So If Picasso Went to the Zoo, which is land animals. If Picasso Went to the Sea, which is obviously sea creatures. And If Picasso Went on Vacation. So all of these are quick one day uh, sort of explorations and it's not all just Picasso. Um, for example, uh, right here we got Peter Paul Rubens and a rockfish. Um, so the poem teaches a little bit about the creature and about the artist. On the bottom, there's going to be a little shell and the color of the shell tells you if the animal is thriving, threatened, endangered, or extinct. This would take one minute to read. Uh, students can have a little discussion about the artwork and about the rockfish and then you can talk about um, how they're endangered or not. And there are artists represented. I made sure that it's balanced with both male and female artists throughout history. Uh, here we have a koi uh, by Joseph uh, in the style of Klimt, 
and again the poem and information about the fish. The zoo one is going to be, you know, land animals. Um, so here we have a Hieronymus Bosch barn owl. Again, the poem teaches about the barn owl and also about Hieronymus Bosch. And here we have a leaf, and the green leaf tells you that um, barn owls are thriving, so there's no problem for endangerment there. The last one, if Picasso went on vacation, if you'd like to incorporate a little bit of world languages and world cultures, this is a good one too. So if I open randomly, uh, we can got a Keith Herring went on vacation. So we have an idea here, and um, this one, if Keith Herring went on vacation, could this be a painting of his destination? Keith painted graffiti in vivid, bright colors, outlining shapes and people and others. Uh, Ulad Sultine is a place in Tunisia. You've seen it in movies, lest you got amnesia. Out in the desert, this place is so hot, these buildings hold grain and hold quite a lot. If you go there to visit someday, learn a few words the Arabic way. Naam is yes, Kala is no, Marhaban is the way to say hello. So they get to see um, the location, uh, you get to see where in the world it is with the little red dot, um, and you know, yes, no, and hello in all the different languages. Again, this would take one minute to read the poem, share the artwork, and um, move on with your lesson. So if any of this has been helpful, go ahead and subscribe to my channel, maybe click that like button, and see what other things I have available for art teachers uh, on this playlist. Thank you so much, and have a great day.